Hi guys, it's Michelle Geomatics with a simple video for you today on how you can work with the length of line features. What I have here on the screen is a map of tornadoes and you can see that the features are lines. If I go into the attribute table, you can see there's a lot of attributes and you may also notice that this is not a geodatabase feature class. You can tell because it does not contain the length field. It has a shape field and an FID field and there is a length field here but it's one that um, a user has added along the way. It's not a system controlled field so I don't have much confidence that these lengths represent the actual lengths of the lines on the map. So one thing I can do is convert this shapefile into a geodatabase and let the software manage the behind the scenes conversion of the length calculation. So I'll start by coming into my catalog window. Here's where I have the tornado.shp, the shapefile, and I'm just going to create a new file geodatabase and I'll call it severe weather for the US and I'm going to import. I'll just right click and import a feature class and because I have this shapefile in my map I can easily choose it from the drop-down list and for the output feature class I'm going to call this US Tornadoes and I'll accept the defaults and the software creates a new feature class for me which is going to be just the same as the shapefile with the addition of a system defined length field to keep track of the line lengths. So I no longer need the shape file, I'm going to remove it. And now I have my US tornadoes. If I look at the attribute table, you can see over here at the end that there's a shape length field. Now the units that you see here are sometimes puzzling for users. What do they represent? And the question is it depends on the coordinate system that the feature class is based upon. So to find that out, I just accepted the default when I did my conversion from shapefile to geodatabase, but I can go into the properties on the source tab. If I scroll down, it tells me the coordinate system. So this is a USA contiguous Lambert conformal conic. And as I scroll down further, it shows me the linear unit is meters. So the values that are being stored in the attribute table in the system defined length field are storing meters. And I want to also have these values be in miles. So I'm going to add a new attribute field. So I'll come over here to my table and I will add a field and I'm going to call it length and miles and I'll store it as a float and it adds the new field with null values. And now to calculate values, I can just use the calculate geometry functionality. I can do calculate geometry. I'm outside of an edit session, which I can do, but it means that I can't undo. Since I have no values there at all, that's okay. But if I were overwriting existing values, I might choose to do it from inside of an edit session. So I have that safety net of being able to just not save the edits to undo the values. So the property here, I have lots of geometry values that I can choose from, but I'm going to use length. I'll use the coordinate system of the data. And I want the units of my new attribute field to be in miles. So let's go ahead and do this. I get another warning saying, OK, you're outside of an edit session. And it calculates the values for me. So I can now see the values in miles. And I could symbolize the data based on that. So let's come into the symbology. We'll do quantities. I'm going to choose the miles. And we'll give these a different color scheme. If I zoom into an area here, you can see these tracks. And the longer ones stand out a lot better now that I'm able to color code them. So this is a simple training video to show you how you can work with the length in the feature class properties. This is one of the huge advantages of the geodatabase is that it automatically calculates and stores the length for lines and polygons, also the area for polygons. All right, I hope this helps. This is Michelle Geomatic saying goodbye for now.